Greg Cox is the New York Times best-selling author of dozens of novels, novellas, and short stories. Among his more popular works are the novelizations to The Dark Knight Rises, Man of Steel, and Godzilla. Writing media tie-in novels brings its own set of special circumstances for a writer. By definition, writing a media tie-in novel, like a you know, Star Trek novel or a movie novelization, uh, it is you know, more collaborative than just sitting down and inventing your world. Not only are you working with your editor, you're working with the licensor and the movie and TV people to varying degrees. And for something like Star Trek, you're basically collaborating with 50 years of writers and directors who have already built up the world and set the rules and used up all the good ideas. Oh, did I say that? Um, you know, uh, etc. So yeah, it's, it's, much, it's by definition a very collaborative process and there's lots of back and forth and feedback and you know. I've been doing this for about 20, 30 years now and I like to think I have a pretty good instinct for what raises red flags with the licensors. And really, if, if you go into it the idea that I'm going to put my mark on the Star Trek universe and shake things up and break the rules, you should probably be writing fan fiction. Okay, um, that, that's, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, you know, you're playing with somebody else's toys and you don't want to, and you have to treat them with respect and not break them too much, you know. Cox's work has garnered him three scribe awards from the International Association of Media Italian Writers. In addition to writing, Cox works as a consulting editor for Tor Books, which led to his embarking on this career path. There is no, I think, prescribed path. Pretty much every tie-in author you'd ask probably found their way into it through a different route. In my case, I actually started out on the other side of the desk. I was a full-time science fiction editor at Tor Books for years and edited lots of movie novelizations and tie-in novels. And I actually still do a little bit of that on the side. I sort of gradually sigged from editing tie-in novels to writing them. Um, because it's kind of a small world, and it's the same people, and well, Greg, you want to write this? Well, why not? With the popularity of fan fiction, many people think you have to be a fan of a particular property in order to write the novelization, but Cox says that isn't necessarily the case. I think it helps, definitely, if, to, to, you know, it gives you a head start to go in. I mean, you know, my not-so-guilty secret is I would be there on opening night watching Godzilla or the new Star Trek movie, regardless of whether or not, you know, you know, this was my job. On the other hand, it, you know, it's not mandatory, um, especially in these days of DVDs and home videos. Uh, you know, thanks to the miracle of binge watching, you can bring yourself up to speed. I, I had an incident recently where an editor called me up and asked me, Greg, are you a fan of a certain series? And I answered her honestly, no, but I can be. And after about, but you have to do your homework if you're not, if, you know, Star Trek is already burned into my brain, so that's great. But, you know, you spend three weeks binge watching a series, you know, you, you, you become a fan, you get to know how it works, you study it, so hopefully you can fake it, okay, <laughs> you know? One notable aspect of Cox's writing is his use of humor, even in a more serious property. I think that sort of comes naturally. And indeed, in the early days of my career, I think I almost at times got typed as, you know, the funny Star Trek author, or one of the funny Star Trek authors. Hello, Peter David. Um, you know, I have occasionally been requested, hi, Greg, we've got, we'd like a lighter story for this anthology, um, or whatever. So, you know, I like to think I've burst that boundary. But yes, I, I lean towards funny stuff. Uh, yeah, it's sort of my instinct. I've done Warehouse 13. There's probably a reason they, I like to think they called me and asked me to do Warehouse 13. I'm doing The Librarians now, which is also has its whimsical side. So, you know, I can force myself to bear down depending on the genre, since a lot of writing tie-in novels is capturing the tone of, you know, and the feel of the series. I mean, Underworld, I did four Underworld books. Underworld is not funny. And I had to sort of curb myself, remember, you know, Celine does not make quips. Celine is not Buffy. Buffy. There's no wisecracks in, in Underworld. That's deadly serious. And you no, know, there are no jokes in my Underworld books. But yeah, you know, that, that does kind of come naturally and I will sneak humor in. And that's something I like to think I'm even kind of known for. For a writer and editor of science fiction, Cox has a more non-technological approach to writing. Big believer in outlines, legal pads, and index cards. That's, that's my technique. I tend to do all the brainstorming on, you know, big yellow legal pads. I honestly cannot think without having a little, 
a legal pad in my hand. You know, I wish I could plot while I was mowing the lawn. I can't. I need to have a legal pad. And then once I start getting ideas, I write down scenes and characters and funny bits and ideas on index cards and I shuffle them and reshuffle them until I have what I think is a workable plot. And then I sit down and write the outline. And invariably this means that you end up throwing out some really good index cards because you just can't, okay, this is a great bit, this is a neat idea, it just doesn't fit. Save it for next book. Okay, and of course part of the tie-in process, if I can talk, if, is that, yeah, like I said, it's a necessity. The way it works, you know, CBS, Paramount, whoever, want, doesn't just say, oh, go make up a plot, we trust you, Greg, do whatever you want. No, they want to see a 15-page outline and approve it uh, before you start writing it. Uh, you usually don't get a contract until they've... And usually there's a bit of, you know, back and forth, oh, this is good, but change this, oh, don't use this villain, you know, whatever, we're using this villain in next season, you know. Um, that's the problem with doing a book, or the challenge of doing a media time with something that's still a going concern, is you kind of have to, you know, stay on top of what's going on in the series. Always writing, Cox has several new projects out in 2016. There's a new X-Files anthology out. X-Files, the truth is out there, and it's a collection of stories. I got a story in that book. I just had a new Star Trek uh, novella come out titled Miasma. That's a ebook only special, so there actually is no tangible hard copy. It's it can be downloaded onto your, uh, you know, Kindle or whatever. And I just finished writing, like I said, the first of the Librarians novels based on the TV show, The Librarians and the Lost Lamp. And that comes out in October from Tor Books. So, oh, I, oh, I forget, I, I also have a big Star Trek novel coming out in June from Pocket Books. Uh, the full title is Star Trek The Original Series Legacies Book One, Captain to Captain. It's book one of a big 50th anniversary Star Trek trilogy. I wrote book one, Dave Mack wrote book two, and the team of Kevin Dilmore and uh, Dayton Ward wrote book three. And of course, we all collaborated and compared notes, lots and lots of emails back and forth. So, and that's, that's coming out in honor of the big 50th anniversary celebration this summer. Fans of Cox can meet him in person at Shore Leave 38, the annual science fiction conference held in Hunt Valley. Among the other writers attending are David Mack, Michael Jan Friedman, Andrew Hiller, and Aaron Rosenberg. Also appearing are Karen Gillan from Doctor Who and Guardians of the Galaxy, John Noble from Fringe and Elementary, Robbie Amell from The Flash, and Zoe Palmer from Dark Matter and Lost Girls. Oh, it's fun. I enjoy it. I've been doing this for, again, a long, long time. Um, hey, I did my very first convention panel back in the 80s with Theodore Sturgeon, okay, who wrote Amok Time, and who, the guy who invented Pon Far. I remember being very intimidated, you know, um, but he was very gracious um, to a newbie. Um, no, I, I enjoy it. It's a chance to get out and talk to people. For one thing, at this point, it's also sort of a reunion. It's a chance to see my friends and colleagues and editors whom I don't see as much as I used to when I lived in New York City. And also just to meet people, talk. I mean, I spent most of my days sitting in my office by myself with a cat on my lap. You know, it's nice to get out, talk to other fans, you know, hear nice things about my books. Occasionally hear not so nice things about my books, you know. Yeah, no, I, I enjoy going to the conventions. Details on Shore Leave can be found on their website sure-leave.com.